The deeper I got into understanding fungi, the stranger and more important and the more understudied that I realized they were. What I'm hoping is that we can take this basic knowledge you've generated and translate that into some useful practices or technologies that might help us face some of the most important sustainability challenges that, uh, that are out there right now. Our lab is interested in microbial diversity and understanding the ways in which this invisible diversity influences the things that we see around us. There's a growing realization that many of the most important processes in the Earth system are driven by microbes. I say microbe to mean kind of more generally the suite of invisible life that's out there around us, bacteria, viruses, and fungi. We end up using DNA sequencing primarily to try and uncover the diversity and composition of microbes that live in, in soils or on plants or animals. We do study bacteria in our lab, but I primarily focus on the fungi. One of the ways in which fungi are most obvious to us is through the production of mushrooms, and I think that's what most people equate with fungi. Mushrooms are really just the tip of the fungal iceberg, and so mushrooms are the reproductive structures of fungi, and so they are like apples on an apple tree. There is this network of mycelium, uh, these microscopic filaments that make up the fungus, that is below the ground or below your feet where you see that mushroom. The thing that I am the most passionate about is mycorrhizal fungi. Mycorrhizal symbiosis, this intimate interaction between the, the plants and the fungi, it's really everywhere around us, anywhere you see plants, uh, essentially. And so this is where the fungi actually grow into the roots of the plants, and they provide this essential benefit for the plants. They give them things like nitrogen and phosphorus, which are often the nutrients that are most important in improving plant growth. And in exchange, the fungi receive a large fraction of the photosynthates that the plants have generated through sunlight-driven photosynthesis. And this is really essential to almost all plants and their healthy growth and, and well-being. It's been estimated that this is a pretty significant um, carbon flux. There was a recent study that estimated about 13 gigatons of carbon dioxide equivalents go below ground to feed these fungi, and this is equivalent to about 36% um, of total human emissions of CO2 from fossil fuels. These fungi are very large players in the overall carbon cycle. In the last, I would say, a couple of years, I've become progressively more interested in how what we've learned about fungal communities can inform you know, really important questions about things like ecosystem restoration or enhanced carbon storage in soils. The two most attainable applications we could be shooting for would be either to help make plant communities more resilient in the face of climate change or to enhance carbon storage in soils. And so if we can understand which fungi most positively influence, say, heat adaptation by their plant hosts or drought tolerance by their plant hosts, we could think about trying to seed the soils that they're in currently with these more adaptive fungi. This wouldn't necessarily have any major moral risks because we're thinking already about you know, fungi that uh, these plants might already associate with. So we can use natural communities. The other thing is carbon storage. If we can understand this process and manipulate it a little bit, say we could come up with agroforestry plantations where the fungi that the trees are associating with either take more carbon from the host, so more carbon goes below ground to get stored in the soils, uh, or their uh, necromass or their biomass decomposes more slowly, so it sticks around in the soils for a longer time period. We could enhance the carbon sink that's naturally present in soils. The more you learn about fungi, the more you realize that they are influencing the, the things that we see around us. There are probably somewhere between one and a half and 10 million species of fungi on the planet. We've only described a small fraction of those and we understand the fundamental biology of an uh, even smaller proportion of those. And so there's a lot to learn about them.